And why don't we jump over to a classic mono green Tron because I did accidentally queue up with that. And we'll play our match. Um, real quick, this list is pretty standard. So we're on the old, um, no great creators. Um, minimize that. So we're on no great creators in this version. And then uh, the four spheres, four stars, four maps, one, three relics, four scryings, four oldstone, four worm coils, four karns, two ugans, two ballistas, and two ulamogs. In the cyborg, we've got two dismembers, four ley lines, three claims, three veil of summers. I've been actually pretty impressed with this card. Two thrag tusk and an emerkel. Uh, we're using. Um, Dylan Donigan's, uh, not Dylan Donigan's, uh, Dominic Harvey's list, uh, minus the um, Dismember in the main. I wasn't a big fan of that for the most part. So let's get this going. Two Tron pieces and a couple can trips. I'm willing to keep that. Man, I am red. We were uh, disc golfing out at a, a park today, and um, I thought, like, I put, like, plenty of sunscreen on myself before we went, but it was so hot today and so bright that I it must not have even mattered. Hmm, probably devoted devastation, you guys think? an island. Oh, we got a... We're pretty good at this. We got our ancient star. Let's see what we get. Mine? Mine? No mine. Um, now, getting our land drops is pretty important, but the walking ballista is going to be huge here, so let's grab that. Run this out. Run out of sphere. We'll pass it over. Another oath. I think this is the card that we talked about. If uh, if ancient stirrings get banned, we're playing this. All right, that's a bird of paradise. An island. So no bird for them this turn. Okay, let's draw a card. We don't get anything. Run up the relic. Correct that as well. Map. Yeah, now we're in business. Pass it over. Another oath. Okay, we're just oathing all we want. We're finally gonna run out the mist of the bird here. We're a devoted druid. Our turn. We're gonna go ghost core to power plant. Go get mine. Cast uh, ballista for two. Bird. Keep our draw in. Now, they don't have anything I'm particularly afraid of. I'm okay with keeping the bird on the board. Usually with any of these matches, you want to focus on taking out the combo pieces, not necessarily just a mana accelerant. So bolting the bird is not correct here. But if we get to untap, it's going to be pretty bad for them. Ballista with like insane amount of mana, and more importantly, we get this Ubi.
opponent's really thinking about things while the opponent's thinking about things. Let me get this deck updated onto Stream Decker. That's updated there for you guys, if anybody did want to take a look at that list. Okay, they're going to fell at RS. Imagine they're targeting the Ballista. No, they're going to target the Oath. Okay. Just want another card draw of sorts. Alright, so we got the Felidar combo. Shouldn't be worried about anything this turn. I feel like their hits have been pretty bad. Sure. Well, let's just casually drop the Zugan on them. I would like to minus this. X is four opponent. We are monsters. Go get a Sanctum. Speed in for two and pass it over. Not sure what our opponent can do at this point. We've got them in a pretty bad spot. ourselves an Ulamog. Go ahead and exile that. Shoot them. Pump the rest of our mana to this. Go score them off red, maybe? See if they run a mountain. Ha! They only have three basic lands? Serious? They can see it here. Well, just button didn't want to work. That's good to know. They only have three basic lands. And that's a match. Okay. Well, I don't want these relics. Not really that relevant. Definitely want the Dismembers. And I think I want the Emrakul as well. Mm -hmm. Try to think of Veil of Summer is going to be useful here, and I don't think so. And I don't really need to clog up the board or anything like that. I don't think there's any enchantments we want to blow up. Debatably, we should be bringing them in because they might bring in some sideboard hate for us. So maybe we should be bringing those in. Yeah, that's not unreasonable. Let's cut a couple worm coils. We don't really need to put that much pressure on them that way. Ooh, Natty Tron. That's how we do. big fan of these particular Tron lands, mainly because they're so different in color that when I'm searching through my deck to look for them, they just pop right out.
My teammate Noah, on the other hand, loves to be a savage and runs one of every version of the Tron lands, messing with people so much they don't even know what to do. That's pretty rude, I gotta say. He also has everything mismatch. All his lands mismatch, all his spells mismatch, all his planeswalkers mismatch. It's, it's a whole hot mess. Yeah, I feel like I would mess up my own, like, list. We just swapped off of it. We will be playing a league with it. I got, I, I'm trying to knock out a quick league with uh, this because the two-person queue we were getting with it um, was a pretty not tier one, not tier two decks. So if I can quickly knock out a league with this, we'll jump back into Mardu Shadow, then George will get here, and then we'll run the Electro Dominance. If there is a deck that I think I can get through a league with the fastest, it would be this one. You know what? I don't know either. Yeah, we did play three games with, I mean, three matches with Mardu Shadow. We played against, two against um, a, a Swans deck. And then we played one against a um, an Aria Flame Blue Red Cantrip deck. Uh, I'm not going to break that right now. If we don't get anything next turn, we can crack it and go get a tower to guarantee ourselves um, a turn for Ulamog. Right now, I'm just hoping our opponent doesn't drop two uh, threats, because if they do, we're probably dead. Because we don't have any uh, interaction with them this turn. I'm such a fan of Renegade Rallyer. Evolution, okay. We got a good five drop. They're gonna slime us? How rude! And they're gonna hit the one that we don't have a copy of in our hand? Oh my gosh. Some people. Some people. I mean, we're gonna reform, but still. Can you believe this? Monsters. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm gonna get blown up all of our lands. <laughs> Oh my gosh. They're doing what I like to do. I love acidic slime. Like, our only saving grace is that we can still form Tron, but I swear if they do that again, and if they hit the power plant, we're gonna be crying. Oh, that's infinite dead. We're we're out of here. We're out of here. Alrighty. Um. Oh, this only gives us protection of blue and black, so we're gonna run it back. Oh, that hand's doing a whole lot of nothing. Same with this one. Ooh, if anybody's not aware, our uh, one of uh, our founding members of Team Swish, we just got our hands on... We're just not doing anything. I guess I'll keep this. Uh, 
Um, we just set up our Swish MTG page. So we're going to be posting all of our stuff in there. It is a work in progress right now, but we'll be make sure to get that going so where we update all of our matches, what we're playing, what events we're going to, how we did, tournament reports. We're going to be trying to get all that on there. Uh, I'm linking our um, any of the things that we're doing with um, streams on there as well or videos. So right now I'm the only one that's streaming, but we'll get, a, we'll get these other guys in there too. Ooh, and also exciting news for everyone. I'm going to Dallas. Just confirmed my room arrangements. Get to bunking up with some awesome people in a really dope Airbnb. Booked my plane ticket already. So now it's just a matter of time. All right, we got to hit our land drop, so I'm going to crack this Sylvan Scrying. Got to mine. We'll play it. Cry a little bit inside. It'll be mulled to this low of a land. Hopefully, see if we can still form Tron. If we form Tron, though, we're pretty set. We're pretty set with where we're at. Ooh, Gorbatron with the five month stream. I mean, five month subscription. Uh, Gorbatron says, Oh my god, I love this stream so much. Dewey's the best MTG player on Team Swish. I'm not. I'm terrible. I wish I could be good as them. I wish I could rally a ramp. That's a T. Very disappointing for us. We're gonna run out this O stone. Hope we hit a land, preferably um, a certain tower. I hope they don't slime us. Okay, we can deal with this. They can ramp themselves right if they want, or just reset a land, that's fine. Ooh, I am gonna be able to go to quite a few events coming up. So I've got uh, so I got Dallas that I just mentioned. And is that lethal for us? Yeah, that is. That is game. Alright, so I get to go to Dallas, and then I'm gonna go to Magic Fest Indy. Um, I'm gonna go to a Ren Fair. That has nothing to do with magic, but if you guys have never been to a Renaissance Festival, it is so much fun. Um, we're going to one on the east side of the state, and the, the, the one that we go to has something called the Feast of Fantasy. So our normal tickets are like 25 bucks, but for $80, you get the entry, and you also get this three-hour feast where you get a six-course meal, unlimited drinks, I've got a, a, a horn um, mug d just for this, um, and unlimited drinks, and you're having a great time. So then that goes on for three hours. You're getting live music. There's a band playing. There's uh, a host. There's uh, jesters. Um, you get to yell at anyone that comes into your castle. Um, they get sword fighting. People are dying. There's royalty there. It's a blast. You go with a great group of friends. Like, uh, I went with a group and they dressed up. I didn't dress up much, but this year it's a Shamrocks and Shenanigans Festival. Dwee's wearing a kilt, okay? I am buying a kilt. I'm getting the full setup going. It's going to be fantastic. So that's just the rent fair. Um, but then uh, I think it's a little bit of a break. I think there's an IQ or two at the, uh, from middle to end of September that I get to go to. But then in October... Um, I'm going to be doing my weekly cabin, a yearly cabin trip, but then after that I get to go SCG Indy into the regionals and then I'm going to fly to Atlanta. So I'm like pretty geeked for how much magic I get to play in these next uh, two months. And because of the top 10 that I did, ooh, we'll keep this. It's not great, but we can make this work. Um, because of the top 10 that I did, I also am going to be uh, automatically queued for the Invitational once I enter into a couple more Opens, which I'm already planning on doing. So that's pretty sweet.
Yes, Destro, you are correct. This is not Mardu or Electro. We're taking a quick break from it. I did play three quick games of it, but I queued up with the wrong deck. I'm jamming through a league real quick with this. As soon as this league is done, we'll be jumping into the Mardu Shadow deck, so it won't be taking too much. Yes, if you make a donation to these people, the knights will come and like haul off your friends to a stockade. Uh, it's fantastic. Last year we did it, and our friend was stuck in the uh, in the blockade, and um, he had to sing in order to get his way out. Obviously, we have the whole thing on uh, the whole thing on recording to make sure that you know it's worthwhile. Looks like we're going against Jund. That would have been sweet to, sweet to hit the Tron land there. All right, we got a mine. That's good. Mine, map. We'll pass it over. Mardu Shadow went pretty well. We didn't go in against any, like, uh, Tier 1 decks, so we went against Swans twice, and then we went against Aria Flame, because I queued up with the wrong deck for the League. So we did go 2-1 and one with it. So what I'm going to do here is I'm wrapping up um, a League with Tron real quick, and then we're going to jump into the Mardu Shadow, and then after that we'll do the uh, Blue-Red Electro Dominance deck. So that's pretty good. We'll do this. Thanks for the follow, 31GR. Oop, they're going to hit us. We're okay with this, honestly. We're going to get the force. With that, go get our power plant. Power plant. Sylvan Scrying. Get the tower. Pass it over. Thank you so much for following, Salty Sona. Woo! Folks, we are in the triple digits for followers. That's so exciting. 112 followers. That is absolutely fantastic. They could abrupt decay their own goif. All right, they're down to three cards. We're going to 10 here. That is pretty good. We can go Relic. And we can crack this Relic. Ballista for three. Take out their Goyf. And we'll hold on the Ballista on the Blood Braid. We can do that anytime. And thanks for the follow, cool guy, 777. You are pretty cool. All right, let's... Okay, if he's putting in the land tapped, it's not even a worry. We can do that anytime we want now. So now we can block and shoot down the tracker. You give us a little bit more value by that. So block here. And then we'll take out the tracker. Ulamog is pretty sweet. Let's see if we can cycle into anything. If not, we can use Expo Map. And we'll go get the missing Tron piece in order to Ulamog them. We're only at 8 mana, and if we did the map crack, we would, you know, there's no gain in mana there. So, ooh, that is. Fantastic. All right. So we'll go map, crack it, grab our tower, run out tower, star, wolf ice 21. Thank you so much for the follow. I imagine that's you, Hannah. Yeah, everybody that's um, 
everybody that's playing and, and has been doing really well, it got off of the wishboard. Um, and I think it, and it makes sense because we are at a point where we need the sideboard slots more than ever before. And when we're playing the wishboard, we just don't have access to enough room to have that meaningful sideboard. And as a result, I think people are getting off of it. Um, the other cool thing right now is uh, Worm Coil is just in a great spot. So playing a four of makes a lot of sense. Um, I think our opponent's pretty much dead. So yeah, that's where people are at right now. Etron's still good if you want to play the Etron. Let's go Ulamog, take out their Ravine and their Blood Braid. We're gonna swing at this Renin Six just to get them everything off the board. We're gonna go to twelve. They're gonna be at one card. It's over. Oh, no, I don't have a reason for it. Let me turn that off for you. That should be off. If it's not, or you're still having issues with it, just let me know. Let's bring in the Veils, and I think we want to bring in the Thrags. Trim off the Ballista. They are going to be blowing up a lot of land, so I'm going to go off that, and I'm going to trim one Sphere. I think I can permanently turn off the noise, right? Let me see if I can make that happen for you guys real quick. Alright, so that's gone. Back to the league. This is sweet. We'll keep this. I think the sound should be completely gone. I just went to the general and we set that to zero. The Veil of Summer is um, for that hand disruption. If they want to use like Inquisition or Thoughtseize on us, uh, we'll be able to use it and prevent it and still get a draw. So I, um, They've been playing it. It's... It's pretty interesting. I've used it a couple times against counter spells and against thought seizes and things like that. I imagine they're just taking the map here. Sometimes the sequencing is not going to be perfect. Obviously, like here, you know, they're they're ripping a card out of our hand and we're not going to be able to do anything about it. It also prevents like assassin's trophy though, right? So that's pretty sweet. So if they assassin's trophy us, we can veil it, stop it, and then prevent that. I did also. Uh, yeah, we, so it's a it's a good two for one to take a card out of the hand. We replace ourselves, so it's nice. Um, I wanted to try. I did try it out in. Um, I did try it out in Scape Shift, and that was a lot of fun. Ooh, that is a good call. The Veil Ultimate seems nasty to stop them from doing that. Fulminator as well, I suppose. They're going to probably blow up that power plant. Right, so we'll play this, run out the map. We'll pass it over. Yeah, if we would have had a forest earlier, this Veil would have been hot. Oh man, now they're going to get insane value with that Ren. I cannot believe how expensive that card is. It is stupid expensive. <laughs> Saw it in action, baby. Mm -hmm. 
Blood Braid into Goyf. It's a whole lot of damage heading our way. Alright, so they can alt with the Renin 6 to keep Thought Seizing a Pulsing if they wanted to. It is not. We'll be switching over to that in just a bit. As soon as we wrap up this league, we'll be switching over to the Mardu Shadow deck on. We're going to take a whole lot of damage here. Yeah, for anyone just joining, we'll be uh, wrapping up this league and then we'll be jumping into the Mardu Shadow. And then the... Uh, that's a Bolt. I don't think we're dead. 6, 11, we'll be at 3. They can use Ren and Six to put us to. Well, they have a land in hand. No. They got a, if they have a red source and then a land in hand, we're dead. Yeah. Uh, let's pop this O stone. And then we'll run out Thrag Tusk. Get out of that bolt range. Okay. Sure. Lose Sylvan or Veil. There goes Veil. Let's kill Lily. Drop a worm coil. Use a Sylvan. Factory, play factory. Play map, and we'll pass it over. I'd be hard pressed for them to kill us right now. I don't know how they go about it. Sure. We punted? Oh, you mean by not killing the... Um, choosing to kill the Lily instead of swinging at them? I 
don't know, I liked our line more. Uh, by taking out the Lily, if we did swing at them, put them to three, they would have been able to play that Goyf, and then we wouldn't have been killing them either. Hey, Chai Katsing982. Things are going well. Thanks for joining us. Ah, it's another Fiverr person that's trying to get us to do some uh, some work and whatnot. Appreciate the ask. I am all set. I feel like that's a bot, right? Am I talking to a bot right now? So what do you guys think about this hog business? you guys think they're going to do an emergency ban before uh, these next big events? Or do you guys think they're going to let it uh, see what happens and then maybe do a banning before Dallas? So we got Natron with the Expedition to set ourselves up for an Ulamog on turn four as well. Which is pretty good. And we've got a Worm Coil too, so that's pretty sweet. They're going to force us? Man, they're going to be really mad when we, they see this Natron. <laughs> Um, as far as the amount of top eights, um, it has been doing pretty well. It, it's it's in the top eights. Like if you look at just a top eight profile, you may only see um, a couple decks in the top eights. But if you look at like the percentage of the meta um, at like the pro tour and at like the conversion rates from the for the pro tour and for um, the opens and the GPs, it has been doing very very well. They missed the land drop, so I'm going to go Karn here. And I'm actually just going to take out their land. I don't think it was unreasonable with them banning Bridge, because I thought that was the correct ban as well, because it prevents this immediate turn two. But it's still being a pretty consistent going off turn three and usually killing people turn four. Like, I was on camera and my opponent definitely hit me um, with like 21 power on turn two, which is like disgusting, right? Like 21 power on turn two, and they still had like room to breathe a little bit after that too. The Cyborg Emrakul is pretty cool. I'm a big fan of the card. I don't know how good it actually is in this matchup by any means. Um, you know, this isn't necessarily a matchup I may bring it in against, but I love the card for any combo decks. You're able to just punish them. Um, pretty hard. Yeah, if you want to see the matchup, it is absolutely disgusting. Um, SEG Tour has it. I'm going to see if I can get my hands on a copy of the video to link to my YouTube channel and to my uh, Twitch channel. But man, my opponent puts 21 power on the board, and <laughs> I don't even know what to do. And then uh, I just, you know, I don't want to spoil the video because it's worth a watch. Like, it's, it's a great uh, game ones, two, and three are just fantastic. Yeah, people have been talking more about like the Faithless looting ban, and it's it's curious because uh, some people are saying that's not even going to be enough because they can still go off without it. Ooh ooh ooh, we're in some uh, hurt right here. I'm 
We would love a. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, we would still like to see like an O stone or an Ugin. Neither of those. Let's run out this worm coil. And hopefully they don't have a burn spell for whatever we block. Because if they do, we're dead. Or if they have another snag or anything like that too. Might have been greedy going after the land. It may have just been correct to take out one of the pyromancers. But we did it. Right, obviously they don't have it if they are thinking this hard. Unless they're just trolling us. Okay, they don't have it. I'm going to use Ulamog and we're going to take out both of their lands. Get a Ballista. See if they have anything relevant with this floated mana. Okay, Snapcaster's fine. That's fair, they may not have known the line. Alright, we swing, guarantee our life gain. Then we'll, we'll be at 13, block this, take 2, 4... Yeah, so we'll swing here. Um, block one, take ten. Yeah, we'll go to three. So we'll die to a bolt, but we die to a bolt either way, if they have the land for it. What's up, Lucid Hope? We, uh, thanks for joining, man. Um, George will be here relatively soon, I am told. Um, he's not here yet. And we played Mardu Shadow just for three quick matches. It wasn't what we were looking for because we are... Um, looks like he is here. Um, we... We queued up for the wrong with the wrong deck, so that was my mistake. I'm expecting them to bring in a good amount of hate for us here. So we will be uh, playing it in just a bit. I want to bring the Thrags for sure on the Nature's Claim. I have a feeling that Ulamogs are going to be useless. So you'll be able to see the full thing. I don't think I want to bring a Ley Lines. This member seems too punishing. Veil vale might be reasonable to bring in here because they should be bringing in some kind of counters. But it seems like they're more aggressive here. Come on in. What up, what up? Oh. I have chairs right back there. Hey, that makes no sense. You gonna hit yourself with that? No, last time I remember I smacked your TV screen there. Oh yeah, you're just rude. Yeah, I'm a big rude idiot. Oh, Move that over there so you can see it. Uh, so giving you a recap uh, on this, we played Mardu. I queued up with the wrong deck though. Oh. Uh, so <laughs> we, uh, as a result, uh, played three Mardu uh, matches in. Uh, the two league, uh, the two person queue up, but mm. that wasn't anything consistent enough to get some real, in, you know, information on the league. So I didn't feel like that was fair. Uh, we'll keep this. Um, so we we are going to uh, run through the league because I didn't feel like it was like smart to just throw away the money, okay. and then then we'll jump into Mardu, and then we'll jump into your deck if you're good with that. Yeah, sure. Um, I think we're in match three, and we're one and one with Tron right now. We're playing classic Tron. Classic Tron. 
I like the, the, the mythic championship winning Tron. What's up with the headphones? I always have these headphones on. Are you just noticing them for the first time? That's pretty funny. If that's the case. <laughs> Ooh, a payoff wouldn't be bad. Let's just grab Tron, though. Um, no, I can't act. If I listen to anything, um, I believe you guys hear it too, so it gets caught up in the recording. I think there's like settings where you can like choose which sounds are played through the different things. Sort of like the same way you can do like screen captures of just a program oh. that's running. Then you, I think you can do just sounds, but I'm not entirely certain on that, so don't. Yeah, I'll have to look into that. It's uh, I wouldn't mind being able to listen to music while I'm playing because I usually listen to. Um, music while I play with when I'm not streaming, but I don't want to get caught up with any of the filters and then get like entire chunks of my Twitch stream just like locked away. Oh boy, um, copy strikes. I know. And then YouTube has like been going pretty crazy with it as well and they have like bots that will just like automatically take over your uh, account and get it shut down on that on that aspect. So I'm just like I didn't know that. I thought they just like they like a, they like claim all the money from it. Oh and <laughs> From like, your entire channel? No, no, just from that video. Oh, it's going to be like, <laughs> goodness. That is a ramble master. Not too bad. We'll take two big hits off of it, and then we can hit it with the O stone. Is this game one? This is game two. Oh, what are they on? Uh... We, game one, all we saw was um, two pyromancers, a bunch of cantrips, and we took up all the way all their lands. So we somehow queued into Danny on this modding. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's not enough instant speed for Danny. <laughs> That's fair. I do use OBS. If opponent is on Blue Moon, this is definitely Danny. <laughs> but. Blue Moon with Stifle Bird. Oh, yeah. If it's Stifle Bird, we're, we're 100%. It's, it's at least someone from West Michigan if there's a Stifle Bird. Yeah, because nobody in any other part of this country or world plays it. Because <laughs> no one knows the true power. We're about to get our O Stone countered. That's going to really suck because you're just dead next turn, probably. You're not wrong. You're not we're wrong. Three, five, eight. It would be going to five. I mean, you just like double bolt you, or like bolt snap bolt. This feels like a counter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's the old fetch. Well, he didn't get another yes, red it, source. So. It is modern staple nimble obstructionist. We'll be on Mardu in just a bit. All right, that's death for us, right? I guess uh, technically he not. didn't fetch a red source, so he can't. Go double bolt you, unless he has a, another red source in hand. But Brown Rice, we queued up incorrectly. I will be jumping back into Mardu in just a bit. Are those. Ooh, the assembly workers are artifact tokens. So yeah. we can block and block then... and then nature's claim our own guy for four life. Yes. That's what we call high IQ plays. Unfortunately, they're not the place that will get you into the top eight of the, you know, SCG. Open? Yeah. Luckily for or us. Tenth place, even. <laughs> I wish. That. I'm, like, like really happy and really sad about that. Uh, yeah, missing it on Breakers. Like, to me, like, it's always just like, oh, man, I played well enough. It's just my opponents didn't. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's because I picked up so I picked up two losses in day one. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure they both like dropped out. <laughs> ah, yeah, that'll that'll uh, hurt the old win rate. Alright, uh, very strong chance we're gonna be going back to five if our sequencing here. Uh, but I feel like we're gonna be dead. Does that just kill us? No, it's neutral life total, because we'll be blocking the big dude taking four, but gaining four. So we'll be at two. This is going to be really awkward when they cryptic command our nature's claim on our own guy. Right. <laughs> <gasps> are we allowed to move the blocks? We are. 
do we get? Oh man, board? it'd be extra cheeky if they went cryptic, bounce your guy now, then draw a card. <laughs> yeah. just like playing draw with the their bolt, food. Bolt us. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, yes, <laughs> they do have the snap bolt. I'm done with this. All right, we're out of here. <laughs> blue red, blue red sometimes gets to win. Oh my gosh! All right, um, I don't. What do we have the nature's claim in for? Just like a I was, ex silence, I was or... expecting them to blood moon. Oh us. yeah, blood moon. Right. No, that makes sense. Um. I don't think there's anything else I want to bring in. I may want to bring in the veils, but I mean they probably only have a couple counters. Is the thing? I don't know when they're running cryptic command, they usually run pretty heavy on the counter spells. Yeah. All right. Well, let's I think bring like that in. I think that is their game board plan. Uh, and they're going too wide for like, cards, then. Yeah, because like they brought in the rabble master, mm -hmm. so that kind of makes it makes a lot more sense where you can just go like. Turn two counter spell, turn three rabble master, turn four hold up snap counter spell or cryptic. Okay. And so uh, it it makes sense with what they're doing. They could just enjoy rabble master, <laughs> just have no thoughts on that plan. But well, I'm gonna what I'm gonna do then? I'm gonna <clears throat> cut out the four Karns. I'm gonna bring in the three veils and one dismember, and I'm gonna cut the third nature's claim for the other dismember. And this way. I am able to get more of their creatures. Mm -hmm. um, take out the you know the rabble master that murders us. Yeah. <clears throat> Unfortunately, not good enough. Yeah. God bless London Mulligan. Sure is. This is also crap. Yep. It's fine. We're trying. We don't even need cards. This is a this is modern lands, and we can't draw more than one land. We got this. This is fine. Uh, we'll ship this. This. I mean, it's not fine. It's literally just a, another What's version of the last two hands we mulligan that you well, said no, were no. literally bad. No, so this <laughs> hand's very different, in fact. Uh, this hand has land into a cantrip that has a one mana H of Stirrings that allows us to go the, get the other uh, Tron piece, and then we go Expo Map into it. The other two hands had no options of that, where this one does. That's why this is a very different hand. Setting you up for those those big brain exp explanations. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> Delver in modern 2019. Yeah, this guy has to be <laughs> running counter spells. There's there's literally no way he can. What? Do... I'm so excited for this person. This guy just he's the boldest person. He's playing Rabble Master Delver like. This guy might have actually came out of a time machine. Okay, <sighs> never mind. He didn't come out of a time machine. He's playing Force of Negation with his Delver. He didn't know we had this Expo map, though. Got him. He's going to do Another Force. Again. Another Force. Okay. Oh. That would be hilarious if he just, like, snapped off a second one and just, like, <laughs> yeah. got you. Double Force of Will. If he's a real Delver player, that's flipping right now. <gasps> he's not mm. a real Delver player. Don't abrade me. Never Don't abrade me. Oh, boy, that's not good. I we we really we really need to draw that O stone here quick. <laughs> All right, we need ourselves a mine. We go mine. Star. Let's do the old cantrip business. And pass. Well, they don't have four mana yet, so the the Is odds that... of Thrag resolving is pretty good, but. Yeah. Yeah, clearly they just uh, automatically flip their card now that we're going to have a blocker for it. <laughs> and they revealed Cryptic Command, so we get this one turn to resolve something. Oh my gosh. Okay. Right, Tusk it is. Shooketh indeed. <laughs> I don't even know. Uh, if we hit an O stone, we can jam it this turn. Oh, you want to do that? Yeah, uh, I mean, like... I'm good at that. Yeah. Nope. Oh. That's okay. That's so sad. Was it maybe technically correct to jam double, the star first? Double and crack then, it. Yeah, like double crack and try to draw... Uh, possibly, I was. Uh, it's probably the fact that I was already thinking I should just cast the Thrag Tusk cat and then put down the uh, the Star and pass. Um, that I was on that line. I forgot my Hearthstone basics there. 
Yeah. See, see Always you. draw first. <laughs> that was like really. Well, we see the, he took care of the issue for us. We can't even cast it now. Yeah. So you know, can we race him? Um, no. Yes. Yeah, technically, if he has literally no spells. Well, he, we know he has a. <laughs> I mean, it's probably our best shot, anyways, because like we know he has the cryptic, so yeah, we're not like we have to like, yeah, we're uh, it's bad. It's not good. It's not good. <laughs> well, at least he didn't shadow him, doubt you. Andrew has a good memory of you know playing against me, missing a land trap, and then getting his. Second and third fetch lands shadow of doubted when he found them. Yeah, shadow of doubt's like I have actual PTSD from that card. <laughs> <laughs> I I have definitely on the play gotten many a Tron player back in the day when Jeskai control was the big dog control deck. And there were like there were so many times people would play Tron, they'd go, like, I'd be on the play, we'd go land, go, and they'd go, like, land, map, pass, and I'd go land, pass, and then they they would try to crack it on my turn three, and I'd be like, Shadow of Doubt, and they're like, yup. And then they would try to do it again, and I'd go snap Shadow of Doubt on yeah. turn four, and they're like, mm. <laughs> Interesting they didn't kill us last, like, they could have just, like, tapped down our Thrag Test, get a token, and killed us. Mm hmm We're still dead. But they could have done it faster to save us the trouble. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, one and two. I'm bad at this game. Yeah. The, this, is, this is all tenth place at an SG open gets you. Yeah. I don't think even like I don't know. Maybe <laughs> this is just me, but like my like every time I keep every time I keep placing at an event, I just expect more out of myself, obviously. So then, like when I get a higher placement, like I'm just like, yeah, you should have done that already. You're you're a little bit high. <laughs> <laughs> and that's like a really bad way to look at it. I right? mean, I don't know if that's a positive way of thinking because I mean, it's like confidence in yourself, right? You're yeah. Just like, yeah, like I should not. Clearly, I'm good enough for this. But then you know, it's like it's magic, and you're just gonna get variants right a lot here. right here. Tron. <laughs> Modern is a skilled format where the uh, most powerful player wins. Yeah. <laughs> um. No, and, and I think that comes actually a lot from like when I used to grind tournaments. Um, if I had the financial situation that I have now back then, I think I could have uh, done well and actually proceeded into like some big events. But because I couldn't, <clears throat> I didn't. Yes. Yeah. So. It's sort of that catch twenty two, like the the more ability you have to go to events, like the extra expendable income. Mm -hmm. Generally, that comes at the cost of time yeah. because you have to spend time making that money. Yeah. So, it's uh yeah, like you 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 have less time to dedicate to the game, so you're like kind of worse. Yeah. But honestly, I think there's a there's not much of a difference uh, between the like constant grinding and then someone who's just keeps a, at least a fresh mind of it yeah. on a weekly basis and like i mean there there is a difference clearly as you can see the top people that grind all the time always perform mm -hmm. but i don't think it's as big as people give it credit for because i do think that magic has especially in its current states like modern has a high amount of variance like I mean, let's be honest, you can just look on camera and, like, you literally watch you draw, like, Cedric Phillips was just like, yeah, uh, Anger of the Gods into prime time. Only line. line. Yeah, only line. You're just <laughs> like, Anger off the top. Oh, okay, here's that. All right, like, like, I like how you don't even try to conceal that you drew it off. You drew it off the top, it touched your hand, and you put it into the battlefield. Yeah. You were like, cast this. Yeah. And so, so that guy had to have known. But it just like ripped it off the top. And then like, and then with the summoner's pack you drew the next turn, you were just, like, you almost just flipped it over. Yeah. <laughs> and it was just, 
it was very skilled play, and you know, I do like. However, though, that if he would have made a, that different play, if he would have played carrying feeder, mm -hmm. uh, the turn before you anger, you just die. Yep, on the spot. You know, God bless Hogak. Apparently, like I thought, bannings were the week after the Mythic Championship. Like I thought, this Monday we would be getting a banning announcement. It's the towards the end of this month, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we have like a month of this nonsense. Well, I was just asking if there are people's thoughts on this, like whether or not they're going to do an emergency banning. They didn't with Eldrazi Winter, mm -hmm. so I know that they've they changed how they do bannings because of Eldrazi Winter. Right. They've upped the amount of periods, but. Yeah, we realistically Honestly, shouldn't expect like them. wizards. Yeah, we should not expect anything until the end of the month. They're just, they're probably going to let it just be a crapshoot. <laughs> yes, yeah. and like if they ban it, like I'm not going into any events. Like I, I I'm missing the next two IQs, um, unfortunately. But <laughs> I don't know about that. I miss, I, the the state of modern. I would I legit like I I considered going to Columbus, Ohio with you guys because I. I had that weekend open, mm -hmm. but... I actually think IQs are fine to go to, because there's not that many people playing whole That's deck fair. It's IQs. more like a big FNM. Mm -hmm. Although, like, it depends on where you go. Like, I never want to go to the east side of Michigan uh, again. You Storm. should. And, or, like, into, like, the heart of Chicago or anything like that. Yeah, like, there were so, there's so many burn players in east Michigan. Like, so many... I remember I went into that... <laughs> when I went there with... Um, <laughs> Gosh, uh, Took and Jack. I went there, you know, that was our car. We went there to, I forget what it was. It was like some some tournament, but like... It was an IQ. Yeah, uh, it was, was it? The okay. north, northeast side of town. Yeah, it was uh, in Frankenmuth. Yeah. But, um, so we went there, and I got dumpstered by a human's player. Like, the guy didn't even need to sequence his plays right. That's how good his draw was. Like, he drew, like, like game one. Like, he played... As the last human he played in a turn, champion of the parish, and I was mm. just like, okay, it was. This was after uh, kite sail marauder or violin kite sail marauder cast meddling mage, naming two of the spells that are in your hand after I got to see your hand, and then play the champion. I was just like, you should have reversed that. <laughs> but uh, anyways, I get dumpster. Walk around the room. About 75% of the people were either on humans or burn. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm sitting here with my storm spells, and I'm like, yeah. hmm. I remember that tournament, and it was so funny because there was like, I think there was like seven or eight burn players in the room. And like at the time, burn was in a pretty bad spot. Oh, yeah. Overall, like it was considered to not be in a good spot. But they were just like, burn's great right now. Burn well, is just fantastic. There's so many humans players around yeah. there. I mean, like, Burn has to be at least somewhat decent. Right. And, like, it was really awkward, too, because I was there with Jack, and, like, literally, I think uh, we both lost round one, and mm -hmm. we got paired round two, and I knocked him out <laughs> immediately. Like, Took got knocked out the next round. Like, he he won his second round or his first round, I can't remember, but just he went, like, kills yeah. everywhere. Well, yeah, like, he went, like, X2 and, like, and not, but I was winning, like I kept mm -hmm. winning, and I had um, I got to like two losses, but I was actually still live for top eight, and I, I actually almost made top eight for that tournament. Um, I missed out on like two percent of breakers. Oh. I think I was in like ninth place, but um, I mean it was fine, so I made money back, you know. But um, no, like I. <laughs> I was actually very surprised at how well I did in that tournament. There were some, like, there were some games where I was just like, man, I am trying really well. That's how you yeah. have to do it, though, honestly. Yeah. Like, a lot of times it comes down to, um, you can go in with the right deck, which is a big call. Then as soon as you get the right deck, you have to get the right pairings, draw the right sequencing of cards in order for all of it to work together to give you um, a top eight. <clears throat> Like, all of that has to be there. Like, you can prepare all you want. You get the bad matchup, you're done. You go against an opponent that you did not plan to even exist in this tournament. <laughs> Round one, you're like, okay, get a loss, and then you get crushed by an opponent. Next one, done. You're, the tournament's over for you. You know, right? Like, an 0-2 start means you're you're realistically yeah. no longer in the running. Unless that's a really, you're, really You're hoping time. they pay out to, like, top 16 so mm -hmm. you can make your gas money back. Yeah. <laughs> but... No, I mean, like, 
Yeah. But, so, as to the, like, pairings thing, like, there's definitely, um, some... It's... I think that's largely because you don't know what people will show up. It's largely right. part of the reason why people play such sort of degenerate strategies in modern. Mm -hmm. Because yeah, you get to ignore a lot of them. So, like, you can walk into a room and be like, all right, I get to ignore, like, Hogak. Hogak largely just ignores all of those, you know, random decks. It's like, yeah, I'm just going to put a bunch of guys in play to kill you. Yep. Um, and it even has plan and, like, it has plans for chalice decks and things like that because you can still cast your one drops into the chalice and trigger the venge vines. And, you know, you sure can. If you have blood guests that come out of the yard and things like that, you can sometimes just convoke and delve out of an 8 8 for no reason. And so, like, there's a lot of these things that people randomly play in their decks that try to, like, cheese wins and. Mm -hmm. I, don't know, I like, got that in round one it. yesterday. I went against Jun Moon. Have you heard of Jun Moon? I haven't. Uh, there was a time way back in the day when people still didn't know that Blood Moon was really good against Jund, yeah. that they played it in their sideboard. Like, they didn't... The mana base looked pretty similar to what they play now. Yeah. And they just jammed with Blood Moon. Yep. So... This list was interesting, though. Thank you so much, Slater, for the follow. Um, yeah, the opponent um, definitely crushed me because of Blood Moon Game <laughs> 1. Because I needed to uh, draw the, I think it was like the Breach for the Primus or something, and I just didn't get it. So, just not happening. Yikes. I do have to say Breach. It was not Lucas Bishop. It was a local player from the uh, Rossford, Ohio area. That's the only thing I can think of. Well, the thing was, I'm not. The thing is, it might have been a budget list because he played the one one death toucher with delirium. Oh well, he might have just wanted to play that guy. <laughs> I mean, I remember when that guy got printed, people were hyped about him. They're like, "This is like a, a mana dork for like." You know, Jund and other things like that. His death touch. It's a no, no, and, it, it, and Oh, I have Natron. That's cool. Do we want to run out this though? Maybe it's better to go go turn four, trying to just hold the veil the whole time. Um. Hmm. Because the problem is, if I go um, Tron piece out. I'm going to be have a turn 5 Tron. If I could do this, if they have the thing, then I could so, turn 4 Tron. Okay, so turn 4. I mean, there's not much of a difference. I don't know. They're kind turn of 5 is a big difference. Turn 5, I'm probably dead. Yeah, Titan Breach was pretty good. Um, I enjoyed it yesterday. Three. I'm trying to just think of their best draw. Because they can like play Land Lord, hit you for 3. Mm -hmm. um, Lord. Untap, Lord... Plus, I guess hold up an interaction spell is what they would do. So yeah. that'd be uh, eight. And so that would put you suddenly in a pretty oh, good nine. Team. Yeah. I think so, right? Like, this guarantees that we get turn four Tron. Yeah, that's fair. And then you can also, it also is kind of nice because, like, if they try to, like, Ceremonious Rejection, which is a common Merfolk sideboard card, uh, your Worm Coil. Mm hmm because, like, this way, they're not going to be turning your lands into islands, most right. likely. <clears throat> so, uh, your worm coils pro like, so, like, your worm coils probably going to get to block. Mm -hmm. And then, if they try to counter it, you can Veil of Summer, draw a card, your worm coil resolves. Uh, you know, hopefully, you <laughs> they don't just, like, spreading seize you after that, but, um, I don't know, just helps your thing resolve that needs to resolve. Right. Yeah, we'll definitely get more Titan Breach going. Um, I actually have a lighter week on homework, but I have a pretty packed <clears throat> weekday thing. I'll have to see if I can get another night in for the stream. Just depends on how this week plays out. I'll be doing the stream on Sunday for sure, though. Next week. No issue there. I think I should be able to stream pretty much the rest of... The rest of this month. The weekend before Labor Day, though, I'll be in Dallas, so nothing there. 
<clears throat> We're gonna take so much damage. On that snake. I mean, this isn't as bad as the other curve that I had. Like, turn two lord and a turn three lord is way worse. <laughs> We're going to 12 here, whereas we'd be going to 7, 9 the other way. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well. Hmm. We <clears throat> are gonna hope that they don't have another lord. If they have another lord, we go to 1. If they have two lords, we're dead. Classic merfolk things. They shocked. I'm assuming they have another... <laughs> they have an oof! We're okay with that. Well, yeah, that, that's actually fine because our Ugin clears that up. It has to resolve. <laughs> <laughs> that is fair. I mean, like, they didn't... Sp they haven't spreading seas, so I do think you just play Worm Coil next turn. Right, so like you're going to worm coral. I still die. Why is that? It's got life link, right? Yeah. So I block their biggest creature, which is a three three. Gain ten. I mean, gain six. Go to ten. Then I take one two three four five. Oh no! Six, I seven. guess yeah. I guess we'll be alive. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. So we'll go worm Shoot, coil. They can even play a lord next turn, and you still go to one. <clears throat> Alrighty. See it happen, I'd be really excited. Counters. Oh, why'd you shock them? Did you just want to draw a uh, card? They, yeah, they probably do want to draw a card. Okay. Well, the fun thing here is that we have a nature's claim for our worm coil if anything happens to it. That's fair. <laughs> Being tapped down would be kind of brutal, too. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, so they'll hit it. It target. Oh, and they'll target. They'll target it, and then we nature's claim it. Yep. Ha ha. <clears throat> Next turn, we can Ugin with Veil up. <laughs> <laughs> Rude opponent. All right, we're not dead, right? Um, no, we're dead. No. No, we we uh, trade with three three takes seven go to one. Oh no! No, because this guy's yeah, got the extra attack. Yeah. Dang it! That's so unfortunate. Double trickster always gets them. We saw the line. I just want to kill your dude. Why can't that worm have like that or first strike instead? So you just first strike the lord down and live. <laughs> It's asking for a lot. Actually, no, we'd still be dead if we did that. Because they'd still have 8 power. Never mind. <laughs> Just trying things. Yeah. Easy. We don't have we're gonna get. We're definitely going to get like dumpstered by something stupid this time, though, right? You know? Well, the question is whether or not we just go get a green source. <clears throat> They're going to force us. Hmm. They're thinking about it. <laughs> I mean, honestly, I honestly think that's one of the best uses of force in my It is. It's it just is. like, throw away two cards, keep your map away from me. It's like, oh. So bad for us. We need a green source so bad. Uh oh. Come on, give me a spear, a star, or a forest. <laughs> On the plus side, they have a hopefully a little bit slower of a curve because they have four cards left. Yeah. Oof, sure. I would... Yes! Got him. Okay. Ha, huh, though. Should we wait till next turn to go Sylvan Scrying for a uh, force? That's probably the correct line, right? I mean. Oh. Or just you're, to... you're the one that has more experience in this spot than I would. I like I personally would just run an ancient stirrings right off the top. But... Well, that's the thing. I'm I'm worried about if we don't do the stirrings <clears throat> now, we're not going to get a chance to later on because he could have another counter spell, and then we're really screwed. So I'm just going to go for the stirrings now. Let's see how good we are at magic. Who? <sighs> yeah, professionals, professionals. I just get to change stirrings. I don't even care. Quality, oh, baby. Quality. Mwah. 
See, this is why in modern the most powerful mage wins. The one that casts Stoneforge Mystic, right? The 4-4 four, four on turn 3 mm -hmm. that has the, vig the Vigilance and Lifelink. <laughs> yep. It's very it's powerful. Stops the whole game. There's no other way to get four power creatures into play before then yeah. in modern. It's just not a thing. Right. Um, let's just run out this O-Stone. See what he does. Yeah. Uh oh. What could you be bringing in? I don't think it matters. I don't think it does either. Just probably another. <clears throat> okay. Okay. Matters. Reasonable. Okay, matters. <laughs> kind of matters. This card's uh, so good. This card's so good. Mm. Do we want to use the like claim or stirrings this turn? Because I mean, like, we don't really have much of a use to hold up the uh, autumn. The, uh, the yeah. Right now. I'm trying to think. If we should claim there. Probably just claim our uh, to unlock Tron. That's fair. I like that. Fog is such a good card. It's a quality magic card, man. You can gain a lot of life off of Fog. You sure can. I, I mean, I do have to say, uh, Popper, one of the most powerful cards in Popper, is literally Fog with Flashback. Moments piece? Yeah. There are so many decks that just can't beat that card. <laughs> it's like nuts to me. I mean, it makes sense, but it's nuts. Just two fogs in one card. Uh, blast zone next turn. Wipe the board. Worm coil now. Probably worm coil now. Yeah, I like worm coil now. Now he's gonna have the counter. I'm gonna hurt my grain. <laughs> oh, yes. No, he's just going to violate a hard mooger. Oh, no? Okay. Uh, thanks, everybody, for joining. Much appreciated. I am here. I am Unstable Voodoo. I'm also Quang Voo or Dwee Voo, however you know me. I also have George Hannabon with me here as a special guest. We're playing Mono Green Tron right now because I messed up the queue. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you on that one. Um, and then what's going to happen is after this, we'll be jumping into Mardu Pyro, and then we'll be doing Blue Red Electro Dominance. Um, you know what I hate about this? Hmm. I hate that if he files in a Harbinger, we don't get to draw a card off Veil of Summer. Yeah. I'm thinking the best line here is go sell this guy and get that Blast Zone. Put the Blast Zone in play. Give him one turn to kill us. If not, we'll take over the game. That's fair. All right, I'm pulling it. Should we swing to guarantee the life? If he lets us. <laughs> huh? He might just have us down now. Yeah, let's see what happens. Yeah, Tron is probably one of the best decks in Modern. And what's up, sweetie poo? Oh, I had a guy get so mad at me that I was playing Tron. Like, livid that I existed with Tron. <laughs> So essentially, it was just an alternate version of me, but with Tron instead of Dredge. He was just so mad that I played the deck and was on blue-white. And he was like, why does this deck exist? Why are you playing this deck? You're the stupidest Magic player I've ever met. This is ridiculous. Why are you allowed to play Magic? I'm like, dude. This guy sounds like a classic blue-white player. And like... Am I right, Gorbatron? I like beat him in uh, I beat him in game one by chaining Karns. And he was really pissed about this. Makes sense, right? Because Karn's a fair magic card. Yeah, totally fair. He beats me game two and he's raging about beating me. It's so weird. He's like mad that he's like winning. Um and then after this, um, we go to game three and he's like really pissed that Ulamog exists. <laughs> Like, the card itself. He's just mad that this is a card that exists in Magic the Gathering. So, obviously, the way that I beat him is chaining Emrakul into Ulamog into Ulamog. <laughs> oh. He was not having Did you, a... like, actively change your strategies to be able to do that? Like, no. Okay. It's just classic. Yeah, I, really, I just really wanted that to be the thing that happened where you're just like, you don't like Ulamog, huh? How does two Ulamogs <laughs> sound? It's not just an Ulamog. I believe I didn't Ulamog. fetch it up, though. I didn't use the Ulamog to fetch an Ulamog. 
Was it the cast Ulamog, sacrifice Sanctum, fetch up other Ulamog opponent could see his line? <laughs> no, he let me cast the second one because he wasn't dead yet. Wow, wow. He like wasn't trooper. actually dead yet, so it was kind of crazy. Too salty he to has die. another oof. Oh my gosh. This, this, is, what it's this oof. Oh. This guy's really wishing that we were on KGC Tron. Yeah. Yeah, like, I, I can't beat Blue White to save my life. Like, we went to that IQ in uh, Chicago, and I just got crushed by it. I beat one, and then I lost to the other one, and then I just died the rest of the day. He's got two oofs. Two oofs? Hmm, hmm. I'm going to recycle that joke. Toofs. Toofs. <laughs> I mean, he's just dead to this worm quote, right? Like, he can have grizzly bears all he wants. Like, he's just going to die right, to a 6-6 yeah. six, six lifelink death touch. I just want him to cast some spells so I can cycle this veil. <laughs> I mean, he's got a vial on, too. What else? He, well, he can't use it because, like, oof. Oh. <laughs> Do we, just, do we just claim our own O-Stone? I'm holding on to it for now. Just but there, there's, a, there's a reeling, there's a chance that it might happen fairly soon. <laughs> I wouldn't even mind claiming our Worm Coil after we swing to block and take out two of his creatures either. Claiming our O-Stone is just like, you know, blocking one, right? You know. Hmm? Claiming the O-Stone is just like blocking one, right? You gain four life. Yeah, but I get to block two and kill two. I mean, that would be pretty, like, if he swings next turn with both oofs, yeah. he would just, like, ambush kill his <laughs> Yeah, things. I really want to do that. <laughs> See if we can get some more salt in the MTGO chat. <clears throat> yeah, if those oofs aren't there, you just can't possibly win. There's just there's not a chance. I've been in this position as merfolk before. <laughs> When they when they bust out of the little prison you made for them, Tron is just a nightmare. I remember being so salty that um, so Edgerly, <laughs> uh, he went. Oh God, we're actually getting to do it. This is great. <laughs> <clears throat> that's not a fair statement, sweetie. This is like that's like oh, that's bad. <laughs> Uh oh, <laughs> he got us. I got too greedy. He got us. I got way too Arr, greedy. We're gaining for life. Oh my gosh, I got so greedy. You know, we probably should have thought about this because he's at six. Yeah. And a full attack probably means that he has something. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Listen, we're not here to win. We're doing okay. All right. Maybe we're here to win. It's fine. Go to 20. I think I knew that card was there, too. <laughs> oh, no, no. That's the one he exiled from okay. us. Forcing yeah, the yes, it is. Yes, yes, it is. I did not know that was there. You actually knew that he was down one. Yeah, if anything, that makes my decision even more reinforced. Yeah, that's, that's just <laughs> statistical odds. Oh. Statistically higher play. I can't swing. We would have really blown him out too because we he would have cast that Merfolk trickster on our turn to tap the worm coil. Yeah. And we would have just been like, no, just yeah. proof our guys. Yeah. And draw a card. Oh. We could swing, he chumps blocks. It's not worth it. He just kinda of throws like one specter in front of it or whatever. Yeah. Three three for three three. I don't think it makes a difference either way. So let's just pass for now. We'd like to see if we can cycle this veil on their turn. Escape shift's bad, amulet's bad, tron's bad. Those are like the decks I play. Humans is bad. I've been interested in picking that up. Jun, I don't have enough of a wallet for Jun. Humans actually is pretty good right now. Humans is pretty good. Oh, they cast a Merfolk Mystifier. Cool, we can cycle. Yay, we can draw a card. We're just like, I'm willing to make that block. Yeah. Like, I'll yeah. snap that off. <laughs> That's like the easiest Thrag Test block I've ever seen. Yeah, boy. Hmm. Do you have a counterspell opponent? Mm. 
Is the last card in your hand a counter spell? Uh oh. It's not. Mm -hmm. Man, we we even played right into his trap card, and he's still gonna die. Oh, he could have a counter. I mean, he could. Like right now, we're still just jamming this thing. <laughs> Oh yeah. All right. Cracking our Sanctum of Ugin. Getting a... Oh yeah, Walking Bliss seems like a nice one. What? Oof. Oh. We <laughs> <laughs> just pretend it doesn't <laughs> exist. No! <laughs> oh! We had a really bad judge yesterday. Hmm. And I, the only reason I ever bring this up because I, I I've never had heard bad, a bad judge, judge story. <laughs> like I've I've heard bad judges all the time, but this one was particularly awkward because we did something that we always do, which is um, if someone fails to maintain game state or something like that, there's an issue going on and actually is a problem. We've always been told stop the match, tell them to stop, go find a judge, and then have the judge come over and correct the issue, explain what you saw to the judge, and then the judge tracks it from there. You leave it alone. Mm -hmm. Andrew did this yesterday, was reprimanded by the judge for doing it, was told to never call a judge over for a game that is not yours. Was this the head judge? This is the head judge. Was he like an L3? Uh, we're pretty sure he's an L1. Hmm. So it was really awkward because I really wanted to ask the judge about this because I was like, judge, I've, I've, that's never been the case for me. I've always been told the opposite of that, right? Um, this line here, I'm just going to go relic into worm coil and in case that they bounce it, then they should have all their mana tapped and then we'll pop an also and wipe the board. Um, so yeah, I've always been told the opposite of that. So it really blew me away um, for what occurred. And then... I didn't want to say anything because I felt like if I raised an issue for someone that's on my team, because we're all wearing the team uh, switch polos, um, going to like eject me out of the tournament. And I just didn't want that. So we were like, okay, unfortunately, even though our normal things, we want to make sure people are playing properly and correct that, um, you know, we're not going to because we don't want to get in trouble with this head judge. And I wanted to pull up the ruling for it. I couldn't find the exact text off of the, the judge's uh, online program. So it was just really awkward. Um, we've never had that happen before. I, and I think, so, I'm, I'm going to try not to go into a tirade about judges, because like uh, yeah. anyone who knows me from the local community, I'm, I'm fair, fairly outspoken about my dislike of a lot of the judge mm -hmm. programs and uh, how I think there's a lot of... Uh, just very strange corruption that a lot of us in West Michigan have gotten to uniquely experience with some of the judges that have been here. Mm -hmm. um, but I think the new judge program, which is, they call it a subscription, but it's a really stupid way to call it. They should have said it was a, it's a crowdfunded judge uh, training and information resource, because that's what it is. Like uh, if you uh, read some of the posts from the, yeah, some hey, of the hey. people around here, like it's a, it, it's actually a very cool idea that is not run by wizards and is run by the actual like judging community um and is like and it would help to stop things like this because i'm i i'm 100 percent with you that like that's i've always been told that too right every, i've been, I've been every told that by every l1 l2 and l3 to this day outside of one spe specific instance which is if you were in a professional setting you're technically yeah, not like supposed the to be pro tour. Yeah, you're not, yeah. or it used to be day twos of GPs. I don't know. If Although you can't really bird matches anymore. At you're pro you're tour. not supposed. Or, to, excuse me, mythic championships. Yeah, you're not supposed to be there and thing. But if you're walk, you are allowed to walk by. Was what I was told previously. Um, when I used to uh, do more GPs, and when I did those, they would have those things where they would say, "You are, um, if something's incorrect, you're not allowed to stop the match. However, you are allowed to go get a judge." You're never allowed to stop a professional match. Was what it used to be anyway. I don't, I don't know if that's changed, um, but yeah. Thanks, the Apple LOL third for following. We are doing great today in follows and viewership. This is fantastic. This is fantastic. Yeah, I know, Lucid. Me and ranting. It's a it's a very rare occurrence. Did they put five counters on that? Yeah, they, they put five counters on it. We're uh, dead. We're actually dead. Yeah. 
It was a pretty impressive turn they had. Could not have done anything different, so can't really be mad. <sighs> God bless Faithless Looting. <laughs> so, like, I was told that Leyline's not even great against them. Because it only hits Bird. <laughs> yeah, like, honestly, nowadays, like, Leyline really isn't that great against Phoenix. Like, yeah. They can they can play with Aria Flame and Thing of the Ice. They can easily play around the Graveyard Hate plans. Right. Um, Dismember is probably fine for the. I don't even know if I like Dismember. Probably Veil though. Really? They bring in uh, counters out of the sideboard, don't they? No, no, they don't. I don't think so. I mean, Jerry Thompson just posted a article about Phoenix and. Whole lead. No. <laughs> but um I mean they sometimes do. They sometimes right, have like Immercool. force of negation and I mean Immercool, like that might not be that bad. But I think it'd be pretty reasonable. That was a turn four kill. They went uh, thing in the ice, Aria to turn four kill. Um, yeah, I'm glad you enjoyed the videos on YouTube. I do try to post all the videos that we do have on the stream on here. I'm getting, trying to get my hands on the SCG video that I went against Dylan. Trying to post it on there as well, so I'll have that relatively soon. <clears throat> but uh, before we were so rudely interrupted by your opponent, <laughs> you know, like the the new judge program, like I think it's a good thing and it will help prevent things like that because like. My, th the most famous to me um, story about, like, judges have messed up mm -hmm. uh, was um, Michael Jacobs' uh, Darkest Mage on Twitch. Yeah. Um, he ha he's told the story multiple times on his stream where um, he was playing a match, and if he wins it, he day twos the GP. And this was, like, way back in the day when, like, uh, during the, like, old pro program. And he was going, like, he was, uh, I think he was, it was either, like, I think he was... It was, if he wins the match, he makes day two, and it gets him enough points to become platinum. The next, the next tier of being Yeah, above. he's going to tier up, and it's mm -hmm. going to be like, he gets to ride the gravy train at this point. He wins this match, he gets to ride the gravy train. Uh, and he's playing, uh, essentially, well, I forget what it was, but it was the, like, it was some Naya deck with Bloodbraid Elf, but it used that three-mana spell that puts three creatures on top. And so, yes. like, uh, they would do it where you'd go, um, where you'd be like, so the, the classic thing is like Bloodbraid Elf, Goyf, Bloodbraid Elf. So you have this like ridiculous top mm -hmm. deck going on. Um, and uh, his opponent plays a Path to Exile on one of his creatures that is already on board. And both of them, and is just like, yeah, I'm just not going to search. And his opponent is like, yeah, that makes sense. That's the sensible play. Mm -hmm. Oof, by the way. Yeah. Uh, do we just crack map here? Yeah, I think I am just a... Uh... Go off of, uh, I can either go get Factor and take out the thing in the ice, or just try to pray and get Tron. I'm going to pray. That's fair. I think that's a good move. But, um, God bless the Father. <laughs> we'll be done with this in a couple of seconds, because I molded three. We'll be on Mardu Shadow. So, uh, so they both are like, yeah, let's do this. And then, apparently... Some judge comes in from the side, just swoops in. Mm -hmm. with, like, they didn't even make a judge call, nothing. Uh, swoops and he's just like, you have to search. And they both like, they both look at him and they're sort of like, what? And he like goes through this whole thing. Um, and I'm sure some people are familiar with the like Path Dags out room where it's like kind of, there's a period of time where people are confused that they're like, oh, well, you have to, you can fail to find, but you still have to shuffle your library. Mm -hmm. well, whereas it's not, the, the shuffling is uh, conditionally tied with the, the search. The main search, yeah. Um, and so, but the judge is just like, no, you have to search. And so, and just just like, well, I want to appeal. So he appeals. And I, I, I think it immediately went to the head judge, who's an L5. Mm -hmm. Or, yeah, I think it was one of the L5s. Um, one of the, what, the literal top. And, um, he, and the, the head judge, the, the guy who should know all of the rules, just like, no, that's how it works. You have to shuffle. And MJ's just like, I want to appeal again. And he's just like, I am the top, <laughs> essentially. And um, so he has to shuffle his library. Mm -hmm. And then he goes on to lose that game, lose that match, not make it into day two, mm -hmm. not get enough points, fall off the gravy train kind of thing. Yeah. 
Um, well, back then, it's very, very important to stay up. Yes, it's very important. It's like, like it allows you to go to all these events for practically free. Sometimes you're even making money, depending on how well you do. You know, it's a the grinder's dream. But, um, so, in, uh, later that day, I think, the L5 comes up and, uh, like, I forget what was exactly, like, the conversations and things like that, but he apologizes and says, no, you were correct. Yeah. And, um, like, it cost MJ essentially his magic career. Because, like, he just stopped playing competitively after mm -hmm. that. Like, it was just too, the, the, the amount of effort was just too much for him at that point. And, you know, he fell off. I mean, he's doing fine now. Like, working at uh, Dire Wolf Digital and all that with uh, right. Eternal. But, like, but, you know, it was just, like, it's such a brutal story because, like, there's literally nothing you could do. And it was, and the guy realized the mistake later, but the damage was already done. And, yeah, like, I, I don't know, like, the, the... Oh, we're done. Oh, yeah, we, we've been, like, dead this whole time. Right? Well, we, we, no, we topped Ektron and got it. We got... I mean, yeah, but... We could have gone for the Worm Foil play. Like, they had the Spell Pierce, right? Yes. Yeah. Never winning. All right, let's wrap that one up real quick, and that way we can transition over, get our 50 points, so worth it, right? All right, so we're going to stop that.